everyone. I welcome you all to this new series dedicated towards the high impact topics from UPSC CSE's examination perspective, which we are abbreviating as HIT, that is HIT series. In this series, we are going to cover certain filtered topics which can be very very crucial from examination perspective and those topics from where UPSC is most likely to ask questions in both prelims and mains and in that sequence today I'm going to cover for you union budget but most of you would know and if some of you do not know this I would like to mention it to you in the first instance itself and that's why I have kept this in the very first slide. The term budget is not there in the constitution. The term union budget is not there in the constitution. The constitution mentions about the annual financial statement. So I have mentioned it in the very first slide so that you remain constitutionally and technically correct with regards to your preparation for UPSC CSE. Now let's begin our discussion. So first, let's have a look at budget and the constitutional provisions related to it. According to Article 112 of the Indian Constitution, the union budget of a year is referred to as annual financial statement. The term union budget is nowhere mentioned in the Constitution. So this is something I have already told you. Let me tell you an insight. Earlier, there used to be two budgets. One was general budget and other one was railway budget. But now the railway budget is done away with by the Modi government. In fact, I should rather say that railway budget is not separate, but there is only one single budget that is presented to the parliament and is passed by the parliament single budget for the country. So the annual financial statement is a statement of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the government in a financial year which begins on 1st of April of the current year and ends on 31st of March of the following year. Let's say the budget was presented for 2022-23. So the budget will begin from 1st of April 2022 and will be ending on 31st of March 2023. This is how it is. Overall, the budget contains estimates of revenue and capital receipts, ways and means to raise the revenue, estimates of expenditure, details of the actual receipts and expenditure of the closing financial year, and the reasons for any deficit or surplus in that year, and the economic and financial policy of the coming year, that is, taxation proposals, prospects of revenue, spending program, and introduction of new schemes or projects. All of these are the constituents of the annual financial statement which in layman language people call budget. Another insight for you guys is that budget was earlier presented to the parliament on the last working day of Feb but now it has been pre-poned and I think since 2017 it is being presented on the first working day of Feb. As in, if 1st of Feb is a working day, it shall be presented on 1st of Feb. If not, the very first working day of Feb, that is February, will be the day on which the, bu the budget shall be presented by the Finance Minister to the Parliament or, in other words, the budget speech will be given by the Finance Minister in the Lok Sabha. The budget is classified into revenue budget, and capital budget. So if that is the classification, let's get into the details. First of all, revenue budget, it includes the government's revenue receipts and expenditure. There are two kinds of revenue receipts. There is tax and non-tax revenue. Then comes in revenue expenditure. You have collected your revenue from tax and non-tax sources. Now you have to spend. Where are you going to spend from that revenue is your revenue expenditure. It is the expenditure incurred on day-to-day -day functioning of the government and on various services offered to the citizens. If revenue expenditure exceeds revenue receipts, the government incurs a revenue deficit. So if 
government's collection of revenue is less than what it has to spend for the day to day functioning of the government and for providing various services to the citizen then government shall be under a deficit that is lack of the revenue then there is capital budget it includes capital receipts and payments of the government loans from the public foreign governments and rbi form a major part of the government's capital receipts and if we are talking about the receipts we are also going to talk about the expenditure so capital expenditure is the expenditure on the development of machinery equipment building health facilities education etc now please do remember never ever a borrowed something so this capital money we are getting by borrowing never ever a borrowed money will be spent into the day to day functioning of the government because the government is not going to earn out of it so how will it pay back the loan it will always spend in the capital received into creation of certain capital so that the returns are possible and even the loan and interest can be paid back that is what shall keep the economy healthy otherwise it would be destined to doom so that's why capital expenditure is made on the development of machinery equipment building health facilities and education because all of these activities and spendings are going to create assets for the government for the economy for the country so i have also already mentioned to you but my insight for you right now is that please remember that finance minister always presents the budget on the floor of lok sabha now no matter if the finance minister is a member of rajya sabha still he or she is going to be presenting the budget or giving the budget speech in the house of the people or lok sabha now what are the objectives and significance of the budget first of all resource allocation in the best interest of the society and allocating resources optimally for public welfare uplift downtrodden sections of the society by reducing poverty levels and creating employment creating programs for citizens so that they get basic needs such as food shelter education and health care make sure that there is fair distribution of income through taxes and subsidies control inflation deflation and economic fluctuations thus ensuring economic stability in the country also the budget of any country is crucial as it has widespread implications on that country's economic stability and general life as such because think about it every rules and regulations that exist in your country is coming from the government or are being maintained by the government directly or indirectly and hence the budget the money which is going to be fueled in or pumped in into the economy or is not going to be pumped in into the economy by the government will hold the maximum implications for that country and the life of the people well on that note if we know it is obvious that if there is a government it is going to spend money so why do we present budget why is the government not collecting the revenue and just spending it whenever required for providing any x service or for incurring any x expenditure why budget have you ever asked yourself the question why budget is there and why we go through this procedure year on year this is because all the income of the government gets deposited into cfi that is consolidated fund of india the government derives its power from the people please do recall the preamble it derives its power from the people and who are the representatives of the people the parliament the members of parliament are representatives of the people so from where comes in the money and in the cfi again from the people so if the government has to spend any money from the consolidated fund of india it has to have prior permission of parliament and here my question to you all is what is or what all constitutes the parliament 
you need to write this answer in the comment box below now we have established that it has to take prior permission of the parliament so there is a process that has been decided well defined for the passage of the budget in the parliament it has to go through six stages in total before it gets passed first of all the budget is presented by the finance minister in the lok sabha then happens a general discussion on the budget which could go up to couple of days why i'm saying couple of days because it's really up to the government till when it wants to have that discussion or not have that discussion then thereafter different parts of the budget are allocated to relevant parliamentary standing committees or departmental committees for the scrutiny of the same and then after around 4 to 6 weeks happens voting on demand for grants once the demand for grants are voted upon they are collected under an appropriation bill and an appropriation bill is passed in the parliament once the appropriation bill is passed it is sent for the president's assent and then a financial bill or a finance bill is also passed in the parliament now which particular body is responsible for the creation of this budget the budget division of the department of economic affairs in the ministry of finance is the nodal body responsible for preparing the budget you see the ministry is ministry of finance the department is department of economic affairs and the division even under the department is budget division the first budget of independent india was presented in 1947 and in sight for you guys at first there used to be a leather bag in which the documents of the budget were kept and the finance minister used to take it to the lok sabha and present the budget over there then came in under the modi government red cloth that was wrapped around the documents and it was known as bahi khata now they have stepped up even further and they present a green budget that is it is read out from a tablet now by the prime minister there is no hard copy whatsoever no paper is used so as i was mentioning to you earlier about the year 2017 certain changes were introduced in the year 2017 the advancement of budget presentation to february 1 earlier which was presented on last working day of february please don't get confused i have already told you if on february 1 it is not working day the very first working day of the month of february is going to be the day when the budget shall be presented by the finance minister also there comes one question which can be really confusing to you if this statements comes up in a exam so if finance minister is not available if the finance minister is let's say absent then what happens does the budget get presented or does it not so please do note that if finance minister is not there any other minister can present the budget where he will or she will present the budget in the lok sabha merger of railway budget with general budget also happened in 2017 doing away with plan and non plan expenditure we we'll look into it please have patience so first of all plan expenditure please do note they are done away with they are no more part of the budget or no such segregation is done in the budget currently since when since 2017 now let's understand what was it what was plan expenditure and what was non plan expenditure so plan expenditure all expenditures done in the name of planning that is five year plan were called plan expenditures for example expenditure on electricity generation irrigation and rural developments construction of roads bridges canals etc now you see even planning commission is done away with it has been replaced by niti ayog so if there is no planning commission there are no five year plans if there are no five year plans there can be no plan expenditure then comes in the non plan expenditure all expenditures other than plan expenditure were known as non plan expenditure for example interest payments pensions statutory transfers to the states and the union territories governments etc again i'm going to emphasize for you all plan non plan 
expenditure categorization have been done away with since 2017 onwards. Now, types of budget. Yes, there are various types under the budget. We are going to look at them one by one. But before that, I'm going to take you into a bit of further details as far as the budget making is concerned. Because we have covered the parliamentary procedure, the passage of the budget. But I want you all to ask yourself a question. Finance Minister is presenting a document in the House on the first working day of Feb. How the making of that document happens is the question I want you all to ask yourself and make sure to get an answer. I am here to provide you with the answer right now in this session. So this is how it is done. First of all, a budget circular shall be sent to all ministries and departments. Then ministries will be providing their demand for grants or demands. They'll be intimating the finance ministry's budget division about it. Then the budget is prepared by the budget division of the Department of Economic Affairs under the Ministry of Finance. Once that document is prepared, it is to be signed by finance minister. And once it is signed by the finance minister, thereafter it becomes budget. To celebrate this occasion, a ceremonial or a traditional ceremony is conducted which is known as halwa ceremony. Once the signature of finance minister is there, nothing much or not much is actually changed into the budget document and that's why it is considered that the budget has been successfully created and hence the finance minister distributes halwa amongst the staff. And I hope you all know someone who does not know here i am to help you with the information about what about the fact that budget not only gets the assent of the president and then it is considered passed but also it is presented in the parliament with the prior recommendation of president now right after the budget is successfully made and signed by the finance minister the next step is to get the recommendation of the president so that the budget shall be presented in the parliament and then happens the same procedure which i have discussed with you earlier the procedure that takes place in the parliament that is the finance minister is going to give the budget speech and it is going to be followed by a general discussion and you know the rest of the sequence and now let's come to the types of budget. First of all, zero based budgeting. It is a method of budgeting in which all expenses are evaluated each time a budget is made and expenses must be justified for each new period. Zero budgeting starts from zero base and every function of the government is analyzed for its needs and cost. Budget is then made based on the needs. Then the second kind of budget is outcome budget. It analyzes the progress of each ministry and department and what the respected ministry has done with its budget outlay. It measures the development outcomes of the all government programs. It was first introduced in the year 2005. So is India employing outcome budget? Yes, it is employing outcome budget even today. Then there is gender budgeting. It is defined as gender-based assessment of budgets, incorporating a gender perspective at all levels of the budgetary process and restructuring revenues and expenditures to promote gender equality. It is budgeting for gender equity. Through gender budget, the government declares an amount to be spent over the development, welfare, empowerment schemes and programs for females. Balanced surplus and deficit budgets. Again, we shall be discussing them one by one. So about the balanced budget, a government budget is assumed to be balanced if the expected expenditure is equal to the anticipated receipts for a fiscal year. Then surplus budget is said to be surplus when the expected revenue surpasses the estimated expenditure for a particular business year. Here the budget becomes surplus 
when taxes imposed are higher than the expenses. Then there is deficit budget too. A budget is in deficit if the expenditure surpasses the revenue for a designated year. In India, there is a deficit budget year on year, which is somehow good for the economy. Not getting into the details, but let me tell you, the UPSC has already asked this particular question that in India, there is deficit budget year on year. What can be done to correct the same? We are going to look at that question later on in our discussion. But while we are talking about the deficit budget, I want you all to know about the kinds of deficit that can be there. So first of all, revenue deficit, that is what it is going to be. Revenue expenditure is more than revenue receipts. Only then it is going to be a deficit. So revenue expenditure minus revenue receipt would be whatever the amount would be. That will be your deficit amount. Whatever amount is less than the spent or to be spent amount. Then there is effective revenue deficit. Since we have already talked about revenue and capital receipts, and revenue and capital expenditure please do remember if an amount any x amount from the revenue is being spent on creation of capital that means it is going to give you returns it is going to act as an asset for you so that something which is going to give you back cannot be counted under deficit that's why Revenue deficit minus grants for creation of capital assets that is DCCA. So revenue deficit minus DCCA is your effective revenue deficit. Then there is fiscal deficit which is total expenditure minus non-debt creating receipts. Which means revenue receipts or grants will be under the non-debt creating receipts a money which you do not have to return so if revenue non-debt creating receipts is subtracted from the overall expenditure of the government everything that creates debt and has been spent shall be considered under the fiscal deficit now you know what fiscal deficit is so there is primary deficit because if something is creating debt, that is going to be part of fiscal deficit. We have subtracted what? Not debt creating receipts, right? So if something is going to create debt, that is going to be part of fiscal deficit. If it is going to create debt, then it is also going to have interest payments for itself. Any loan you receive, you have to pay interest on it. But is that your real deficit? Have you really spent the amount you are paying as an interest? No, right? So your actual deficit, that is primarily what you actually spent on the economy that you took loan off, is your primary deficit. Interest payment is further something that you have to pay since you have received that amount to spend in your, in your or on your economic growth. So you have to subtract the interest payment from the fiscal deficit and then the outcome that you get is your primary deficit that actual amount that was deficit when you took the loan to actually come at par with your required expenditure amount i hope all of that is pretty clear to you if there are any doubts do reach out to us through the comment box below moving ahead types of budget deficits and their analysis I have already explained to you in the form of formula what I am going to do is help you understand better. So I am going to expand this discussion a bit. First of all, revenue deficit, meaning it is excess of the total revenue expenditure of the government over its total revenue receipts. Alternatively, it is the shortfall of the revenue receipts compared to the revenue expenditure. So this is the formula I have already told you revenue deficit is equal to total revenue expenditure minus total revenue receipts. It signifies that government's own earnings are insufficient to meet normal functioning of the government departments and provisions of services. 
the deficit is to be met from capital receipts that is through borrowing and sale of its assets what are the implications of such an act reduction of assets revenue deficit indicates this saving on government account because government has to make up the uncovered gap by drawing upon capital receipts either through borrowing or through the sale of its assets which is nowadays very much in news from day to day yes it is disinvestment then the situation can be inflationary since borrowed funds from a capital account are used to meet general consumption expenditure of the government it may lead to an inflationary situation in the economy with all its ills not always it is actually made to be spent on the general consumption expenditure i have already told you whatever money you shall borrow you should ideally or the government will ideally spend it on the creation of capital right but if that is spent on general consumption it will certainly lead towards the inflationary situation because a you have spent the money which is not going to give you back it is not an investment it is a simple spending once the money is gone it is not going to bring you back any amount to pay back through it but you still have to pay your loan back along with the interest payment so what it is going to do for you it is going to create inflation to you also more revenue deficit so revenue deficit can lead to even further revenue deficit since large borrowings to meet revenue deficit will increase the debt burden due to repayment liability and interest payments this may lead to larger and larger revenue deficits in the future as well given the same level of fiscal deficit a higher revenue deficit is worse than a lower one because it implies a higher repayment burden in the future not matched by the benefits via investment now if these can be the disadvantages we have to reduce our revenue deficit so how do we reduce it so measures to reduce revenue deficit a high revenue deficit warns the government either to curtail its expenditure or increase its tax and non tax receipts thus main remedies are government should raise rate of taxes especially on the rich people and any new taxes where possible government should try to reduce its expenditure and avoid unnecessary expenditure then there is effective revenue deficit i have also talked about the same i am following the same sequence in which i have just now explained you through formulas in short so i am just expanding the same discussion i have already told you this but again for keeping you with me for making sure that the continuation is maintained even in your minds i am telling it to you again let's now discuss effective revenue deficit meaning it is the difference between revenue deficit and grants for the creation of capital assets the concept of effective revenue deficit has been suggested by the rangarajan committee on public expenditure it is aimed to deduct the money used out of borrowing to finance capital expenditure the concept has been introduced to ascertain the actual deficit in the revenue account after adjusting for the expenditure of capital nature focusing on this will help in reducing the consumptive component of revenue deficit and create space for increased capital spending then comes in the sequence of fiscal deficit the meaning of which is the excess of total budget expenditure over total budget receipts excluding borrowings during a fiscal year it is the amount of borrowing the government has to resort to to meet its expenses a large deficit means a large amount of borrowing the formula is here in front of you total expenditure minus revenue receipts plus non debt creating receipts it is a measure of how much the government needs to borrow from the market to meet its expenditure when its resources are inadequate how is fiscal deficit met borrowing from domestic sources the fiscal deficit can be met by borrowing from domestic sources example public and commercial banks it also includes tapping of money deposits in the provident funds and small saving schemes so if you submit deposit your money with the government it can circulate that money and it ideally circulates that money so that money multiplier works and the economy gets boom so that even the government can pay you certain interest or you can have increase in the amount of money that you are saving so that's how government pays you interest on the money deposited by you 
in provident funds and small saving schemes another way could be borrowing from the public to deal with the deficit is considered better than deficit financing because it does not increase the money supply which is regarded as the main cause of rising prices so if the if money is more in the market and the products are few there will be a lot of money chasing certain products and hence the prices of the products will be rising up which leads to inflation so for same quantity and quality of the product you would have to pay more price that is inflation borrowing from external sources for instance borrowing from world bank imf and foreign banks deficit financing printing of new currency notes another measure to meet fiscal deficit is by borrowing from reserve bank of india rbi government issues government securities that rbi buys in return for cash from the government so this is also a way this cash is created by rbi by printing new currency notes against government securities thus it is an easy way to raise funds but it carries with it a diverse effects also again what liquidity is being increased in the economy its implication is that money supply increases in the economy same money supply is liquidity creating inflationary trends and other ills that result from deficit financing therefore deficit financing if at all it is unavoidable should be kept within safe limits is fiscal deficit advantageous yes it can also be no matter how much i have highlighted time and again that oh inflation will happen and adverse impact on economy fiscal deficit still is advantageous it depends upon the use of the same the fiscal deficit is advantageous to an economy if it creates new capital assets which increases productive capacity and generate future income stream on the contrary it is detrimental for the economy if it is used just to cover the revenue deficit what can be the implications of fiscal deficit there can be a debt trap since fiscal deficit it is given that you are borrowing you are getting indebted so you can be under debt trap the fiscal deficit is financed by borrowing and borrowing creates a problem of not only a payment of interest but also b repayment of the loans as the government borrowing increases its liability in the future to repay the loan amount along with interest thereon also increases payment of interest increases revenue expenditure leading to a higher revenue deficit ultimately the government may be compelled to borrow to finance even the interest payments leading to the emergence of a vicious cycle and debt trap if your government has to borrow even to pay the interest amount that is to be incurred upon the previous loan that is a deadly situation for the economy inflationary pressure as the government borrows from rbi which meets this demand by printing more currency notes called deficit financing it results in the circulation of more money in the economy this may cause inflationary pressure in the economy then partial use the entire amount of fiscal deficit that is borrowing is not available for growth and development of the economy because a part of it is used for interest payment only primary deficit that is fiscal deficit minus interest payment is available for financing expenditure then retards the future growth fiscal deficit would slow down the future growth borrowing is financial burden on the future generations to pay loan and interest amount which retards the growth of the economy because there a lot of income and money will go towards payment of your loans and interest payments so when and how will they spend for their own growth in the economy now if such are the implications we need to make sure we reduce our fiscal deficit and following are the measures to reduce our fiscal deficit first of all reducing public expenditure i want you all to please be very careful while we go through this particular information since i've already told you such a question is going to be there in front of you shortly rationalizing subsidies avoiding leakages by increasing vigilance and using new technologies austerity steps to curtail non plan expenditure then increasing revenue how we will increase revenue you will increase tax your tax base should be broadened tax evasion should be effectively checked more emphasis on direct taxes to increase revenue restructuring and sale of shares in the public sector units 
focus on disinvestment now let's talk about the primary deficit last kind of deficit i am going to talk to you about so the meaning is it is the fiscal deficit of the current year minus interest payments of the previous borrowings primary deficit is equal to fiscal deficit minus interest payments so primary deficit i have mentioned in the previous slides is the actual amount the government is going to use for creation of capital assets the borrowing requirement of the government includes not only accumulated debt but also interest payment on the debt if we deduct interest payment on debt from borrowing the balance is called primary deficit the importance of primary deficit is that it shows how much government borrowing is going to meet expenses other than interest payments it is generally used as a basic measure of fiscal irresponsibility zero primary deficit means that government has to resort to borrowing only to make interest payments to know the amount of borrowing on account of current expenditure over revenue we need to calculate primary deficit thus a lower or zero primary deficit means that while its interest commitments on earlier loans have forced the government to borrow it has realized the need to tighten its belt as well so this was all about the discussion on union budget from my end all of the static portion as far as the budget is concerned all of the concepts are there in this video you can always watch this video to revise to brush up your concepts and you can ask your questions any sort of doubts in the comment box below moving ahead i am going to discuss with you certain prelims previous year questions that have been asked by the upsc around the topic budget so that you can understand how relevant this particular topic is and how crucial this particular topic is and how much of an interest upsc actually holds into the topic and this asking about this topic time and again so first of all which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect this question was asked by upsc in 2013 a repayment of the public debt b borrowing from the public to finance a budget deficit c borrowing from banks to finance a budget deficit and d creating new money to finance a budget deficit the most inflationary is going to be d creating new money to finance a budget deficit wondering how maybe you have been less attentive on a particular point in our discussion you can always go back and check this video out over again with reference to union budget which of the following is are covered under non plan expenditure what i told you about non plan expenditure and plan expenditure they have been discontinued i want you to tell me in the comment box why they have been discontinued anyways here are your options defense expenditure interest payments salaries and pensions subsidies remember you have to discover the ones that are part of or are covered under non plan expenditure your combinations are as follows a one only b two and three only c one two three and four and d none and your answer is c 1 2 3 and 4 all of them are parts of non plan expenditure next question is along with the budget the finance minister also places other documents before the parliament which includes the macro economic framework statement the aforesaid document is presented because it is mandated by a long standing parliamentary convention b article 112 and article 110 clause 1 of the constitution of india C article 113 of the constitution of india and D provisions of the fiscal responsibility and budget management act 2003 that is FRBM act 2003 your answer for this particular question is D that is provisions of the fiscal responsibility and budgetary management FRBM act 2003 it is because of this particular act since that time the government has been presenting the macroeconomic framework statement along with the other documents in the budget next question is there has been a persistent deficit budget year after year which action or action of the following can be taken by the government to reduce the deficit first of all reducing revenue expenditure then introducing new welfare schemes then rationalizing subsidies and then reducing import duty you need to figure out which of them 
doing which of them can lead to reduction in the deficit budget your combinations are as follows a 1 only b 2 and 3 only c 1 and 3 only and d 1 2 3 and 4 your answer for this question is c 1 and 3 only that is reducing revenue expenditure and rationalizing subsidies new welfare schemes if they are introduced more money would be required and hence more deficit if import duty is reduced that is income for government is being curbed which means the government is going to have less revenue and if it is going to have less revenue it has to borrow more so again deficit so two and four are not the correct options while one and three are next question and the last one for today is which of the following is are included in the capital budget of the government of india one expenditure on acquisition of assets like roads buildings machinery etc two loans received from foreign governments three loans and advances granted to the state and union territories your combinations are as follows a one only b two and three only c one and three only and d one two and three your answer for this particular question is d all of them one two and three all of them are included in the capital budget of government of india this is it for this particular session thank you so much for joining in i shall see you again tomorrow till then take care stay tuned